A judge has ruled that bloggers don't have to hide, get the right to hide their identities in some circumstances. And the winner in the case is a New York fashion model who turns out to be the pioneer. It could set a new precedent. You'll hear from her in just a moment, but here's Jeremy Hubbard with her story. On the runways of Paris or on the covers of Vogue, fashion model Liskila Cohen is used to the spotlight and the scrutiny that comes with it. But she says none of that prepared her for the vitriol she faced at the hands of an anonymous blogger on the internet. On August 21, 2008, the blogger made five separate postings on the website blogger.com entitled Skanks in NYC, including captions and photographs Cohen found not only defamatory but hurtful, words like skanky, ho, and whoring, describing her appearance, hygiene, and sexual conduct. In one post, the blogger wrote, she's a psychotic, lying, whoring skank. Google, the owner of the blogger.com website, later took the blog down but would not release the blogger's identity to Cohen, so she filed suit against Google. And now a New York court has sided with her on grounds of defamation, ordering Google to disclose the blogger's identity. The thrust of the blog is that Cohen is a sexually promiscuous woman, Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Joan Madden wrote in her decision. A lot of people are frustrated, thinking that when they're attacked online, there's nothing they can do. But that's not true at all. You can reach out through lawyers or through the police and find out who's behind that post. You can now bring a legal action, either criminal or civil, against the person who's defaming you or harassing you online. For Good Morning America, Jeremy Hubbard, ABC News, New York. And now a conversation with that model, Liskula Cohen, uh, the target of the blog you just heard about, who says she has had to live with this nightmare for a year, wondering who on earth was doing this to her, costing her work as a spokesman. She's joined by her attorney, Stephen Wagner. It is good to have both of you here this morning. A lot of people would say there's so much meanness going on out there on the internet. Let it go, let it go. Why did you not let it go? Why should anybody let it go? If, anybody, if, if somebody attacks somebody in, on the street, you're not gonna let it go. If somebody attacks you personally, you're not gonna let it go. Why should I let it go? Why? Why should I just ignore it? I couldn't find one reason to ignore it, so I didn't. So tell me about the moment that you knew you were getting, you're just getting the email address, right? You weren't getting the actual name. Yeah, I got the email address and I jumped for joy and laughed and called everybody and I called my mother and I said, thank God it was her. Why? Thank, what do you mean? Because she's, she's an irrelevant person in my life. A close friend? Medium no, just, friend? Stranger? she's just somebody that, you know, whenever I would go out to a restaurant or you know, to a party in New York City. She was always like that girl that was just always there. You got the address, you got the name, did you contact her? First person I called. You, you just dialed her up, what did you say? I said, hi, how are you? And she said, I'm fine, how are you? I said, I'm sure you know exactly how I am right now. <laughs> and uh, I said, I just want you to know that if I've ever done anything to you to actually deserve this, that I'm really very sorry, I'm sincerely apologetic. And she went, oh, 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 we shouldn't be talking. And I said, what? We should talk with lawyers. I said, no more lawyers. It's OK. I said, I forgive you. It doesn't matter anymore. And she said, well, we should talk in person. I said, it's fine. You told her you forgive her? Sure. Do you? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? If I'm, she can walk around with the chip on her shoulder. It's not my job. I know who it is. I know why she did it. She's, she doesn't have anything else to do. It's sad. The attorney for the anonymous, then anonymous blogger argued, this is just more hyperbole and trash talk, which is all over the internet. This is just more of it, just opinion out there. What happened? Well, it wasn't opinion. One of the things that the judge did was balance the First Amendment rights with the rights of people to, you know, be protected from harmful, defamatory speech. It's sending out a message that the internet is no longer a safe harbor for defamatory language. Do you see this as something that will change the internet forever? Namely, no one is safe out there. Don't think just because you've got another name you, that you have the inviolable protection of the anonymity of the internet anymore? Well, I don't know if it'll change the internet. It'll change the way some people act on the internet. And it's 
sending out a message that the internet is no longer a safe harbor for defamatory language. And you will be filing suit for defamation? Yes. But do you think it's important to go to the next step and file the suit? I don't know how I feel about that all the time, you know. Sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, get her, nail her to the wall, you know, do this, do that. And then other times I'm like, oh, well. Maybe if she apologized, it would make things different. That's certainly something I'm... She has yet to do that, so. You said as you sat down, you just, you wish your grandfather? Yeah, my grandfather is a huge mm -hmm. fan of yours. Oh. So, whenever he used to, uh, oh, no, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> He was a big fan, big fan. And your family is proud of you? Yes, very much so. Proud of yourself? Yep. Well, again, it is historic. And <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs>